So what you see before you guys is one, two, three, four, five, six tripods that I have acquired over a long photography career. And I'm gonna break down each one. I'm gonna share the rationale that I use to make the purchase for each tripod from the smallest to the largest to you know the one that I, I use the most. My favorite tripod right now, I'll give you as much information. You know, I'll, I'll distinguish between a tri, uh, travel tripod and an all round tripod and a heavy duty tripod and at the end, you should have enough information to go out and make a really good informed decision as to which tripod you might want to look at for your first tripod. Let's get to it. So what you see before you guys are the six tripods that I currently own. I've acquired them over a long career. And what I'm going to do is break down the purchasing rationale for each one of these tripods, from the smallest to the biggest, the one I use the most. I'm going to give you a ton of real world information. I'm going to tell you what to stay away from, what to look for, what works, what doesn't work. And so with no further ado, let's jump in. We'll take a look at the first tripod. Okay, so first up is this little Cameron tripod. This is a T100BH. This is an aluminum tripod. I bought this probably six or seven years ago and when I was shooting my with my Sony a6000 a lot. I use it more for video now. But uh, the whole reason for this purchase was I wanted to, I was taking a vacation to Cuba, a couple of vacations actually, I wanted to be able to shoot sunset photos of my wife and I, and then eventually other models, but um, I wanted something that was really lightweight, I didn't have to pay a lot of money for it. Um, so as far as rigidity goes with this tripod, it's not too bad, but the build construction is what you might expect for a hundred dollar tripod. So. I'll be perfectly honest with you. This, all this stuff here is like cast. Uh, I don't even think it's it's machined aluminum. It's like a cast metal, very inexpensive, but you know what? It's super lightweight and it did the job. And so let me show you how small this thing folds down to. So first of all, you know, if I if I loosen the lock here and I want to extend this thing. It's actually not that bad. So don't let people deter you from buying tripods at Walmart or like in Canada, we have Henry's camera and they sell this Cameron brand and it's a fairly inexpensive brand. So it may not be your best and biggest and most sturdiest tripod, but just ask yourself, is it gonna do the job that you need to do at the time? And if the answer is yes, then it's a worthwhile purchase. And the reality is, uh, since I bought it, I've used this a few times, right? Whenever I take a vacation or something, I just wanna travel super, super light. I can take this tripod, it, it folds down so small, it's unbelievable. So, and even me being 6'2", I can still use this thing with the camera on top with the extension pull. It has lever locks. Some people love them, some people hate them. Uh, as far as I'm concerned, if they work, that's the tool that I use. So I'll just fold this down. This one sticks a little bit for some reason, but that's what you're gonna get with an inexpensive tripod. And there you go. So, and it fits into a decent sized little case here, as you can see. And that's why I bought this tripod, because it was cheap. It would do the job I wanted it to do. It would support my A6000 with a speed light on it. And it packed down, I could throw it in my suitcase, not a lot of extra weight. So that's our first rationale for the purchase of the smallest of all the tripods that I own. So here's what the Cameron looks like when it's in its case and super small, sling it over your shoulder. That's why I bought it. Super compact, simple as that. This was probably, I can't remember if I said the Cameron was the first tripod that I ever bought, but this one is the first tripod that I ever bought. The Cameron I bought years later as a travel tripod. So this is a Manfrotto CLB. Uh, let me give you the right specs here. Uh, let's see. Yeah, this is a 055 CLB. And this is an aluminum tripod with lever locks on the legs. You can see the height that it extends to without using the center column.
And most people would tell you nowadays, I guess photography snobs will say something along the lines of, oh, you got to have carbon fiber. And the reality is most of us had, a lot of us had aluminum for years before carbon fiber, you know, came to be. And the one thing about aluminum is that it's a little bit heavier than carbon fiber, which can in some cases be a good thing because it gives you extra weight and stability. This tripod, I have no doubt, will last forever. I've had it for years and years. It's probably 20 years old now. You probably can't buy it because there's a new version of it. Um, and it has a video head on it. So that's something to consider about your tripod when you're making a purchase. Are you just going to do photography with it? Are you going to do video? Because if you're shooting video, you tend the rig that you have tends to be a little bit heavier. I think of my a7 IV, a7 III with a Ninja 5 on it and you know you want a head that's going to be sturdy, you want a tripod that's going to be sturdy so I would have no qualms about putting that rig on this tripod uh, with this head or with another ball head that I have. So and my rationale for purchase of this one was I didn't have a ton of money when I first got into photography, maybe like, you know, many of you uh, do. And this was affordable. I think at the time it was under $200. And tripods, if you've been looking, they can run up over $1,000 US. So um, especially here in Canada, everything we buy, if it's a US product, we're paying, you know, 36% more. Uh, so we really take a close look at what things cost and what the value for the dollar is. So that said, this tripod is definitely not, uh, I wouldn't even call it a good all-arounder now because it's a little bit heavy. Uh, I'll use this tripod if I'm doing uh, photography tutorials or I'm doing some tutoring or teaching somebody or something like that and I need one or two or three tripods. So if I can throw this in the back of my car and just pull it out and I need an extra tripod, that's when I'll use this. I don't need it in the studio anymore because I have a self-balancing stand that I made and I'll, I'll show you an image of that so you can you get an idea. But that's not really a tripod. This video is about, you know, tripod. So, but was this a good decision? Absolutely. I mean, I still have it now 20 years later and I don't really have anything bad to say about it. It did the job back in the day and is still going strong. So if you're looking for an aluminum tripod, this one wouldn't be a bad choice. Uh, there's so many manufacturers of tripods right now. I'm going to show you a Leo photo tripod a little bit uh, further in the video, but uh, this one happens to be a Manfrotto and you can't go wrong, uh, you know, purchasing from Manfrotto. They've been around for years and years, but it really comes down to the features that you need. And at the time, all I needed was a tripod, be able to use a little video head. And that was it. This thing did the job. So tripod number three is the Manfrotto. It's in the Manfrotto B Free line. And I bought this tripod uh, as a travel tripod, but I wanted it for photo and for video. So as you can see here, this has a video head on it for all intents and purposes. And for somebody that's 6'2", um, I can put my a7 III, a7 IV on here and shoot with it. It's fairly rigid. I mean, it's the latest carbon fiber tripod. Um, it's the latest carbon fiber they had at the time. It's probably two years old now, but quite rigid, quite sturdy for what it is. And it's a travel tripod. So this thing, if you loosen the head and fold it down, turn this down, the legs on this are the twist type. And this little guy will fold up fairly small and compact. Actually, I did it to myself here. I do this all the time. <laughs> this has to be pulled up. There we go. And then you can get it down to its most compact form. And so the rationale behind this one was I needed a travel tripod. I wanted something that was super compact, came in a case, could be compressed down, you know, super small. Look at this thing. Unbelievable. But, and this is, make sure I give you the right information here. This is an MVKB FRTC hyphen L-I-V-E. So M-V-K-B-F-R-T-C hyphen live with the video head instead of the uh, stills head. 
and a great product but at a cost. Carbon fiber is not cheap and so and this comes with a case so I think I've got it right here. Okay, not a real heavy duty case but a case nonetheless. You can throw it over your shoulder, super compact. What can I say? It's a tripod, it's a travel tripod, it's compact, um, but you know, comes at a cost. So what I'm gonna do as far as cost and specs go is I'll put all that information in the description. Uh, I'll try and give you the most recent information, but that's the Be Free travel tripod. Okay, next up is the first carbon fiber tripod that I ever got, and this was a photo clam. PT-124. And if you've never heard of Photo Clam, I'm not surprised. They are a Korean company. They're a subsidiary of Hyundai Shipping, Hyundai Cars. And um, that's where I got this tripod from. And this is a 28 millimeter carbon fiber. This is eight times carbon fiber. It's probably about 10 years old now. And it has an extendable center column. I just happen to have a little Manfrotto 494 RC2 head on here um, but you know you can put any uh, head on that fits but as far as which tripod I use the most this is it. So if you talk to any photographer and you ask them what's the best camera that that you should buy or what you should have they're gonna say well the one that you have on your person at the time and that applies to tripods as well what's the tripod you should use? The one that you're gonna take with you all the time. So my bigger, heavier tripods, I hesitate to take them because the older I get, the less I wanna lug around heavy gear. But this thing, uh, being as the, the legs on it are 28 millimeters as opposed to 32, 36, you know, and, and larger, I use this tripod the most. And it's worked out really well over the years. So the rationale for this one was it, it was basically my first carbon fiber tripod. I can travel with it and I could afford it and it offered good functionality at the time. And it's a precision piece of equipment and I still have it to this day. It's 10 years old. So now this one it has the twisty legs some people love them, some people hate them. As far as I'm concerned, um, this thing has worked out really well for me over the years, compresses down. Typically what I do with this is I'll take the head off and put it into my actual suitcase luggage that I'm gonna check on the airplane. So that's how I travel with it. I don't uh, use it as the uh, my carry-on. Um, but, it's a nice light tripod and because it is so light and it offers a steady platform for my a7 III, my a7 IV, this is the tripod up until now that I've used the most. So the next tripod I'm going to show you, this is another photo clam. This is the uh, Pro Gold. It's a PT-323. Again, made by Photo Clam, a Korean company like I just mentioned. But the legs on this are 32 millimeters. So this, up until recently, was the biggest, most steadiest, uh, most portable tripod that I have. Uh, this thing is really lightweight, but... The legs are a little bit wider at 32 millimeters here, and then they diminish going down. But another great tripod, and the reason I got this one was simply to have a steadier uh, platform from the PT-124. So I travel with the smaller carbon fiber version of this one. Uh, this one here, I tend to take it when I'm in the car. I want something lightweight. If I need two or three tripods, I might take the, the Manfrotto, this one, and maybe the other uh, photo clam tripod. But uh, the rationale for getting this was simply to have a more steady platform once I started shooting video and doing um, you know, a lot more portrait work than, than what I started out doing. So the next tripod we're going to look at is my newest acquisition, which is the Leo Photo Mr. Q. And I'm putting it side by each here because both of these tripods are carbon fiber. They both have 32 millimeter legs, but this tripod is 10 years old now. 
this tripod is brand new. So the rationale for acquiring this tripod was the increased uh, versatility uh, that this tripod offers over this one. So you can, you can see um, that without the center column extended, this one is a little bit higher, but this guy right here, for me, is, it's perfect, right? So I'm gonna have this down here, you know, with my camera on it, my eyepiece is gonna be right here. So this tripod is the perfect height for me. And weight-wise, this one comes with a ball head, by the way. And so I don't have the ball head on here, but weight-wise, uh, these two tripods are comparable. The big difference that compelled me to get this tripod over this one is the versatility that this one offers. So let's take a look at that now. So let's take a look at this Mr. Q and see how it compares to my other uh, carbon fiber tripod that I just had in view there. And so the first thing I wanna do, let's just close this down. So the first thing I noticed when I was extending and contracting the legs with the Mr. Q, and keep in mind this is brand new, the other tripod is 8 to 10 years old, is that these legs now, this is a 10 times carbon fiber tripod, the uh, Photoclam one is only 8 times carbon fiber. So this is the latest and greatest stuff. So you know, we're not really comparing apples to apples here, but this is what to look for. On this tripod, it truly is one twist to open all three legs. Those other tripods, you you know, you have to fill a little bit. That could be wear over time, I don't know, but I noticed that right away with this tripod. The other thing I noticed is how close it packs down even with the center column in here. Now I've done a complete uh, video on this tripod and I'll put a link to it in the description. I'll put a picture up here or maybe it'll be up here. But um, the reason for acquiring this tripod was the versatility that this tripod offers over just about anything else. I couldn't find anything that had the versatility that this one did, and I'm gonna show you that. Okay. Pod comes with a really nice premium case. I say premium because just look at this thing. Oh my God. Um, it has a little interior pouch here for some uh, tools and your warranty card and all that kind of stuff. So it offers you a place to pack away your center column and travel with this. And it's got a couple of nice YKK zippers and zipper pulls and it has a shoulder strap so you can throw this thing over your shoulder and so just to be clear I can travel with this tripod but really I consider it more like my best all-around tripod so if I'm doing a shoot family shoot at the park or something like that this is the rig that I go for now and it has some features that so first of all you can see the ball head here pretty straightforward stuff the center column you can extend it with just one twist you can bring it down uh, but there's also a lever on this side here that if you release it you can take this out and you can swap it out with another piece which actually fits in here and gives you a flat pla uh, platform so that you can extend the legs out and have the tripod right down on the ground. So that was a huge feature for me, like having this two second ability to just pop this thing in, lock it down, and then away you go. Uh, that was uh, a real game changer for me. Now, the next thing, that was part of my rationale for getting this tripod is that on the sides of the tripod it has a 3816 socket it has a quarter 20 socket so that means that you can plug in a plethora of just about any tool that you want a magic arm uh, ipad mini holder and you'll see that in the other video if you you care to check it out and then over here uh, you'll notice that in the quarter 20 and right here, there's two 
uh, strap links. And you can plug in a button, a strap here to here, and you can throw this thing over your shoulder. So typically, if I'm traveling with this tripod, I'll have it in the case when it's in the car to keep it from getting banged up. But then once I get to the location, I can pull it out of the bag, I can use the strap and just walk to wherever I'm gonna shoot. So let me just grab the strap and I'll show you that. So I bought this with my own money. I mean, this strap has these two little button attached to their quick release, but this thing is just so handy. You just plug this in like so. Plug this in like this, and now you've got a strap that'll allow you to throw this over your shoulder like so. Obviously, I'd have the legs collapsed when I do that, but um, like so. And it's just the handiest thing, right? So this was just one of the features that uh, I fell in love with on this particular tripod. And let's put this down for a second. I actually bought an extra clasp I bought two extra clasps to put on my photo clam tripod so that I could mount things on it as well. So you can get these clasps that have the quick release socket or you can get them with a quarter 20 or a 3 8 16 fitting so that if you need to mount something here, like a little magic arm and have your phone here or a GoPro or something like that, you have that capability. And so that's why uh, I, I fell in love with this tripod. So right now, of all the tripods that I own, this is my all time favorite. And the only thing I'm gonna modify from this one here is I prefer the lever locks uh, for the ball head. So it's not really part of the tripod, but, I'm going to swap out the mount here and put in one of the lever locks. And I did a video on the uh, LH55 ball head, so I'll put that up here. I'll put it in the description for you. But uh, that's what makes this tripod so great, is the added versatility of the quarter 20, the 3816, the quick release. So let me show you that again. I think I've got that fitting here. I do. Loosen the lever. Take the tube out. Tighten it down. You got a 3816, you can mount whatever you want on here. And because this is 10 times carbon fiber, there's a noticeable difference between this and the other 32 millimeter tripod that I showed you a second ago. So this really is a game changer for me. So what are the takeaways from all of the different tripods that I've shown you? Well, the first thing is you have to think about what you're gonna do with the tripod. What is the use case? So when you look at the Cameron tripod, it was simply, I wanted something portable, travel, super lightweight, would handle my A6000. And, you know, I just wanna take pictures, sunset pictures on the beach. So very uh, narrow use case for that tripod. So then you look at my carbon fiber tripods, uh, the PT-124, I use that all the time. It's a little bit uh, narrower legs than this one. Um, and so it's the one that I tend to take with me the most. But now that I've seen the versatility with the Leo Photo, uh, I may upgrade to a 28 millimeter version of this one uh, to replace the old one. We'll have to see how things go. But so again, it's how much does it cost? Well, what are you gonna do with it? Is it aluminum? Is it carbon fiber? How does that factor in? Is it gonna support the weight that you're gonna put on it? So the little Cameron tripod, I'm just supporting an A6000, no big deal. But you put A7 IV with a 50 mil 1.2 lens, you're looking at four pounds plus a Ninja 5. So a tripod like this is gonna handle that uh, the little Cameron is not. And the, the little Cameron is, it, it comes down to longevity. That Cameron, uh, I, that uh, tripod has lasted me five or six years, but uh, I use my gear, but I don't abuse it. At least I try not to. You know, I put it in the case when I'm done with it and then take it out when I'm gonna use it. And your, your equipment really becomes an investment when you do that. So if you look at a tripod like this one here, which is over $500 US to purchase, you have to look at it as an investment. So it may seem like a lot of money at the time, but if you divide that over a 20 year career, it really comes down to not a lot of money per year 
and you're going to get great value of it. So if you can, buy the best quality gear that you can afford, you won't regret it because you'll end up having it uh, for a long time. Okay, so I know we covered a ton of information in this video, but the best advice I can give you is buy the best quality gear that you can for the budget that you have. Think of it as an investment over time. You won't go wrong. If you found the information in this video useful, please hit the subscribe and like buttons. I really appreciate it. That helps me out a little bit. Um, I think I probably said enough about the Leo Photo tripod here. It's, it's my favorite tripod right now because of the added versatility here. Um, they're making a great product. You may want to consider Leo Photo if you have the budget for it. Um, they have a ton of different models of tripod, whether you're shooting video, uh, photography, you name it. The Mr. Q is a great all-rounder. I'm getting a lot of great use out of it. So thanks for watching and uh, I'll see you in the next one.